Right, well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Double Chinwag podcast with Lauren and Mr. Lauren, a.k.a. Andrew. That's right, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. How's your week been? Do you know what? I was just saying before, I can't actually remember what I've done. No. Um, No. Which is helpful for this podcast, isn't it? I'm really sorry. I think... I think the most exciting thing that I've... Basically, I've been living vicariously through my Sims mm. because I've started doing that live streaming mm. of an evening. Noticed. Um So I can tell you what they've been doing. Well, I, I don't understand. Just give me you know, a brief couple of minutes explanation because I very rarely watch any of your videos because I don't want you to give me the ick and end up having to <laughs> dump you. So I, I tend not to watch your TikTok videos. So to explain what's why you're sat in the corner of a screen with some pilot's earphones on. I, I'm trying I'm trying something new. I think there is a certain point with um with your content as a TikTok creator when you just get a little bit stagnant. And do you know what I've lost my way a little bit, I feel, because of you. Mm. No, no, I know I get are, the blame. You are to blame. Well, because my it was all about being a single woman before mm. and dating and all that, but obviously I'm not doing that anymore. So I'm having to try and find something new and and work out exactly where my content is going. So I thought, well, whilst I'm trying to work that out, I'll try this live streaming. Plus, I only got given like the permissions from TikTok to do it, so I wanted to try it out. Mm. So, so that's it. That's that's what I'm doing. And and what happens with these Sims or whatever? Have you are? never played it? No, no, no. It's, it's well, you play your hospital game, don't you? I've seen you playing that. Well, I like theme hospital. Yeah, I like games from the 1990s. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is similar to that, basically. You're just telling people. It's not, uh, you just, you're in charge of a sim or a family or whatever it is, and uh, you give them instructions of what to do. Mm-hmm. But I've I, I played it before. I played it years and years ago. I had to, like, wean myself off it and stop because... My Sims had a better life than I did. I was successful as a Sim, but as a human, I was dog shit. Yeah. I need to try and not fall into that trap. So I'm currently trying to do the 100 baby challenge where I force my Sim to have 100 babies of 100 different men. Right, that sounds a bit like exploitation, doesn't it? Well, it's, yeah, no, she's willing. She's willing. She loves it. Oh. Slut. Okay, <laughs> well, it sounds... Sounds interesting. I know what you well, mean, that's... though, about being more successful online, because I'd be a great hospital administrator Yeah. if my performance on Theme Hospital is anything to go by. I you know. Yeah, but I saw you. You got a bit power mad last time I saw you. You were like Alan Sugar, sacking everyone. Well, sometimes you have to. Difficult decisions have to be made. Um, yeah. He says, sounding like a Tory. <laughs> Difficult decisions have to be made, unfortunately, when you're in a position of responsibility, you know. Well, it must. It's tough at the top, isn't it? It is very tough at the top. Yeah. So, how um, how's your week been? Well, quite boring, really. I've I've been working for most of it. Although it's my first day off today, and uh, I went down to the co-op earlier on. Oh yeah. I timed it all wrong because uh, the kids were just kicking out of school, so it was full of kids in oh, the yeah. co-op. And you know what they're like—the little bastards, aren't they? They're all in there shouting and bawling and pushing each other over and mauling. They seem to be obsessed with these little bags of cookies. You know, you get like five cookies for a pound or something. You love They're them right. as well, don't you? I know. Well, I can't touch them because all these little snot-nosed little shits have had their hands all over <laughs> them fighting over these bags of cookies, so you can't get in any. So, you know, I was dying to say something to them, but of course you can't, can you? Because you'll end up with the bloody fishwife of a mother on your doorstep, won't you, with her hair scraped back in a scrubber's that, and threatening to... That surprises me that you didn't say anything. Well, you can't you can't shout at kids anymore for that reason, can you? Because you get some fucking woman on your door saying, my husband's going to batter you when he gets out of prison and all this, you know, so... So it's interesting that you'll shout at a load of pensioners looking at yellow stickers in Morrison's, but... Well, they're not going to set kids. the dad on me, are they, pensioners? No, good point. So, so that's all right. So you can't do anything with kids these days. They get away with murder, don't they? And on top of that, there were five separate people in there that all fucking stank, right? And I, <laughs> I should have just gone to booths because you don't get these people in booths, do you? No, you don't. What? Uh, smell of what? Well, just stagnant piss and mould and damp. Dirty bombs. Yeah, and there was there was like a group of three. They were all they all just happened to be women, right? There was a group of three, and they were like you know those Russian dolls you get where you can fit one into the other. <laughs> 
there was like an, an old mother and then the daughter middle-aged and then the the granddaughter right and they were all like fucking elephants right massive all with ill-fitting clothes on and bits of flesh poking out of the of the various they are like those primark leggings on where you can see through them they're not because they're that fucking thin right and like vest tops on with various bits of flesh bulging out all over the place or oh, the hair they'd not washed the hair in months it was oh, it was fucking horrible honestly and one of them was going i think it was the middle one was on the phone to somebody shouting at the top of her voice going no i can't i can't i'm, I'm stood at till with cash ready in me hand i can't i've told i can't i've told you no no like that, the top of her voice, right? She wasn't at the till, she was by the pop, because the old woman was going, how much is that Pepsi? I can't <laughs> see our Brenda. Uh, what's that to say? She's on the phone shouting, and I, I wanted a bottle of Diet Coke, and this is unheard of. I didn't buy a bottle of Diet Coke because I couldn't get anywhere near it for the fucking smell. <laughs> it was knocking me fucking sick. It was disgusted. I was disgusted, honestly. You don't get that in Fulton and Mason, do you? <laughs> no, you just get blokes walking around in the jogging pants with the balls swinging well, down. Well, as I say, you know, I'd forgotten me belt. <laughs> it's not the, I will never let you forget no, that, you know, ever. There was another one who lives down the road from me. I recognised her. She was another one who doesn't wash her hair, and she's got a moustache, and she stinks of ale. She's stood at the end of an aisle on the phone to somebody going, All right, Michael. Uh, all right, Michael. Yeah, all right, Michael. All, uh, all right, Michael. All right, see you, Michael. All right, then, Michael. All right, bye, Michael. Bye, Michael. I felt like going, who was that on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, honestly, horrible. Right, so um, is it safe to... What were you getting, by the way? Well, I went in for Diet Coke. Is that all? Yeah, and I thought maybe I should get some a loaf of bread or something, but... I, I've Is got, that all? <clears throat> uh, what else did I get? I've got a can of Red Bull because I knew I'd mm. need a bit of stimulation for recording this podcast. Yeah. I got a packet of salt and vinegar McCoys. Yeah. Because because I, I just had a sandwich, so I thought I'll have some of them with my sandwich. Yeah. And that was it. You didn't buy any cigarettes then? Of course not. How right, dare just... you cast aspersions, guys? Can I, I just have say... one packet of cigarettes in the car for emergencies. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a contiguous packet. This is his emergency packet, okay? And he's had this emergency packet pretty much since we since we met, I'd say. Isn't, isn't that true? Yeah, well, the first one I bought was when you pissed the bed in front of right. me. Right, right. No, it was, I asked you to leave the room whilst mm. I did it. Thank you very much. But So this emergency packet of fags has been in on the side of his car door now since we... So over a year. Mm. So it's how big was the packet? Well, it keeps replenishing itself, such as really? the, the misery Magic. of my <laughs> existence. So, well, I'm glad that you didn't buy any more, because yeah, you always seem to buy some when I'm around. I know, yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? Well, I can't, I, I, I can't work it out. Well, it's just that that's my downtime, and I like to enjoy. Now, I'm now I, do, you, I used to. What I used to do was just buy a packet on a Friday and have a nice packet of cigarettes for the weekend, and then yeah. go back on the vape Monday to Friday when I'm at work. But I can't do that now because I don't. I have to work weekends some weekends, so I can't do that now. So now I get them through the week sometimes. If I've run out, if I've had a particularly strenuous, stressful, and tiring week, sometimes they need replenishing quicker than other times. You know. You see, I I used I used to smoke for oh I think I smoked for about ten years, mm. and I. All I can think is that time between that last cigarette and then the first one that you have. So let's just say if your last one was on a, on a Sunday night and then the next one was Friday. All I can think is the sheer misery that I would be feeling from Monday to Friday. Yeah, that's pretty much the misery that I feel because, and I'm ashamed to say this, I absolutely love smoking cigarettes. Oh, I, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. This is why now I will never, I will never touch. I, even now, I mean, how long have I quit now? I, I probably quit smoking about six years ago, something like that. Mm. Even now, I love the smell. I always say to you, don't I? God, that smells good. Yeah. Uh, but I could never have one for the fear of, because I know it would just take one and I would start smoking again. And one, I can't afford it. And two, 
it's it's quite antisocial now, isn't it, to be smoking? It is, unfortunately. People do look at you like you're one of those people I saw in the co-op, unfortunately. Exactly. And they do, to be fair, the minute that cigarette's put out, they stink. Yeah, the smell of stale tobacco is not great, yeah. is it? You Fresh know. tobacco, I could smell that all mm. day, every day. This I is why I'd like a pipe, that. you see. I'd like to smoke oh, a pipe. You won't let me, though, will you? But fucking pipe again. I like, yeah, but it's a bit more kind of quaint, isn't it, and acceptable. No, you just look like a knob. I'd be walking down the street. And looking like a knob, and everyone would be like, ha, ha, look at that prick with his pipe. They'd be going, look at him with his pipe. I've not seen one of them for years. That's good, isn't no, it? No, they wouldn't. And, and they'd they start laugh. applauding. No, they'd probably throw stuff at you. I don't think they would. You can't, I'm, I'm sorry. Spontaneous applause. You'd look a right knob. Well, you can't I get a pipe. Put my flat cap on. Oh, yeah. Well, you might as well go for the full shebang. You'd end up looking like Compo from Last of the Summer Wine. Oh, nice one. You can't get a pipe. Not yet. You're not no. there yet, mm. surely. Right, moving on. Have you had any correspondence from uh, your lovely followers this week? He I says, am. reading it off, off a script. <laughs> okay, so Nicola has asked, do you have a song that is linked to your relationship? No, don't think we do, do we? Yeah, we have actually. Thanks for that. What do you mean? No, we haven't. We, yes, we have. Well, well, what's this song then? I obviously wasn't there when you decided this. We've got, well, we've got two, actually. Have we? Yes, we have. And I'm really fucked off that you don't even mm, acknowledge well, them. You know, go on. Right. So, my song, mm. um, and I said, this reminds me of you. And it was Callum Scott Biblical. And I played it. And I was getting quite emotional and stuff. We were in the car and that. And he just went, a bit shit. And I was like, right, okay then. And then you said, this one actually reminded me of you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's that fucking Meal Deal song. Yeah, Lunchtime Lover. Oh, it's a Can great put... song. Mine, mine was literally a song about being so much in love and your love is biblical and all that sort of shit. And you were just basically telling me it, your song was... Okay, I've I've paid a lot of money f- now, and I'm not prepared to do it anymore. So can we just get a meal deal? Yeah, yeah. Well, you thought that was quite. I seem to vaguely remember this. Now, I've never listened to that song that you suggested because I've I've never heard of it, and I still yeah. can't remember what it was like. I mean, I'm sure it's lovely, but it at least at least pick something that I've heard of. That it just made me think of you. I was on my way. I was driving on my way to your house. The song came on, and I was like, "That is such a nice well, song." That's, that's that's lovely. You know, it is lovely. lovely yeah. yeah, but that's... but I'm just your lunchtime lover. In fact, I was listening to something the other day. Something came on on my Twitter feed, and um, it was "Make Someone Happy" by Jimmy Durante, which is yeah. a lovely song. And I thought of you, and nearly got emotional. While I was listening to it, thinking Nearly. about you, yes. So, what? Give me the gist of the song. Uh, well, the lyrics are it's so important to make someone happy, make mm-hmm. just one someone happy. Uh, something, something, heart to heart. You'll sing to love is the answer. Someone to love is the answer. Once you found her, build your world around her. That one. Have you heard uh, would of you it? say you've you've built your world around me? Cool. No, because you, you're you're very antisocial. You don't <laughs> phone me. You hardly text me. <gasps> I've, we have separate right, I'm not lives. Being... We're like Phil Collins and that bird. Separate <laughs> lives. <laughs> not being funny or anything, but you've been very. I've been the one double messaging this week. A double messaging. Yeah, when I was the last one to message and then I'll message again, that goes against everything that's like inbuilt in me. But I've messaged you first in the morning because I know that you're working and that mm, you're dead I'm busy. a very busy man. But days. I know that you'll go into a fanny fit if I don't send you a message at all. No, well, no, no. I used to worry about that, but now I know that you're an arsehole that doesn't really give a shite. <gasps> then I've, got, I've just got used to it. You can't say that because people will believe that I am an arsehole that doesn't give a shite. Yeah, but you are. Anyway, we had another comment, actually, from Nicola. Mm. What's one thing that you know about each other that others would be surprised to learn? Mm. Well, this is pressure, this. It's like Mr and Mrs. Uh-oh. I'm not very good with these things. I haven't got a very I'm good a memory. Sh- I have to write sh- shit down. See, I don't... What would others be surprised to learn? I suppose they'd probably be surprised to learn that we're both secretly, in real life, kind of very sensitive and anxious I don't think that they'd be surprised to hear that about me. Well, you come um, across as very confident. Well, yeah. 
but I'm also riddled with anxiety, which mm-hmm. I've been very open about, to be fair. Mm-hmm. But for you, for you, I think, yeah, I think people would be surprised to, to learn that about you. Because I'm, I'm you are... Very quiet. I don't say a lot, do I, usually? No. Mm-hmm. But what I will what I will say um, about Mr. Lauren is is that out of out of everybody that I've been out with, and there's been a fair few, let's face it. Oh, right. Lovely. Yeah, just throw that in. Yeah. <laughs> Right, no. fucking slag here. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I would I would say that uh, your emotional intelligence is is appropriate for my level, if you get me, because mm. the amount of men that you can spend time with and they've just got no emotional intelligence whatsoever, or all that of a nine year old or something. But at least with you, I know that any conversation that needs to be had that's maybe of a sensitive nature, it might be my anxiety, mental health, anything like that. I know that you're you're very receiving of those conversations, aren't you? You're very comfortable to have them. It appears to be anyway. Yeah, well, I you my don't job make to me feel stupid. You, so, you know, yeah. You know. Well, I always I say I I've never had that before where I've, I felt like actually. I could turn around and say, Do you know what, I'm really down at the moment, whereas most men would say, right, think it, it's like an attack. Well, obviously you're down because you think I'm a shit house and everything, whereas I think having those sort of discussions with you, it actually, you feel better after the conversation. You don't feel like you're offloading or anything like that. So, yes, you are. Um, I think people would be surprised to know that you are quite sensitive and emotionally intelligent. A bit of a metrosexual. I would, yeah, I would say so. Unfortunately. not, not It's not very manly, is it? But... Um... Um, no, uh, this is the thing you see is that men think it's not very ma- like manly. Women do. This is what we want. This is what we've been waiting for forever. A man that you can actually discuss stuff like mental health with if you're not feeling too great and him not being utter fucking child and getting a strop of you about it. So no, it is very manly and it's what all of us women want. We want emotional intelligence. It's so attractive to, to have a man that's that's capable of having a conversation with you that's you know beyond tits but i don't think there's i don't think there's much that would shock people about me purely because i'm so open on tiktok yeah I've shared You've so laid much yourself bare, haven't you? i really have yeah i don't think there's much that they don't know about me to be fair yes on the on the face of it you know i'm quite confident but i'm confident in and this is just going to like state in the obvious but i'm confident in situations that i'm in control of yes i'm confident online and stuff like that because i'm in control of the situation i can i do the editing i decide when it goes up when it comes down the video i mean obviously Mm. so but put me in a situation that i've got no control whatsoever such as being out in london for example yeah um you know we'll go into go into concerts stuff like that for me that's where I get really overwhelmed and do you say quiet? I don't know. Yeah, I do go quite quiet, I guess. Well, what are you going to be like uh, on June the 8th when we go to see oh. the Eagles? I am so excited. I have to say, it's the, probably the best birthday present I've ever had. And I, do you know what? You, you, But you deserve it. I know that we, we usually take chunks out of each other and everything like that, but you, you do deserve it and... I just want you to have the best birthday possible. I genuinely do. Oh, I will so, do. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially on June the 8th. I mean, we'll forget that my birthday's in July. We'll just gloss over that bit. Yeah. But on June the 8th, the Eagles are performing at that tumble down fucking arena that they can't yeah. get ready in Manchester, supported by the Doobie Brothers with Michael McDonald's. That's just like the best birthday present ever. So you're coming with me. So yes. you're, you're going to be all riddled with anxiety are you because there'll be 23,000 no, people in there <laughs> no i'm gonna slap my patches on <laughs> mm-hmm. a few days before so that i'm i'm ready i mean i, I just it, it doesn't matter it, it i just want you to enjoy yourself and like i say i think that you really deserve it it's been a testing year so far with your job and everything so just just anything plus like i say you because what happened, guys, is that we were out. We I'm going to say we were out for a meal, but we were in Weatherspoons. Yeah, you can't say we're out for a meal yeah. when you go to We were just basically eating, not in the house. Yeah. We're in Weatherspoons, and I can't. I don't know how you brought it up, but then, I, I, honest, honest to God, when you were talking about it, and you were like, and these are going to be here, and these are going to be here, I was like, fucking, this is the most emotion I've seen out of you since you got sacked. So, yeah, we, we just had to we pop it on the credit card, and we'll we'll deal with that later. Whatever makes my little cherubs happy, that's fine. Well, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. So hopefully, I mean, I don't want you having a big anxiety attack or something. 
No, it'll be, it'll be you know, fine. I was having to get St. John Ambulance out. Well, no, even when I went to see... The problem that I have is it's not... I don't get... I don't like... How do I describe it? It's like when I went to see Beyonce. Now that, totally overwhelming. But all I did throughout it is disassociate. It's like I'm dreaming and I'm not there. So it's not like an induced panic or anything like that where I'm having a panic attack. I haven't had one of those for years. All that happens is that I just feel like I'm dreaming, uh, which is a pity when you spent 300 and odd pounds on a fucking ticket like I had to go and see Beyonce. Luckily, I took some videos, but yeah, that's the only that's the only disappointing thing is that in situations like that, I sort of don't get my money's worth because it's like I'm not there. No. Um, well, I mean, you'll you probably, I mean, you'll get halfway through the Eagles and you'll just be thinking, when is this over? Probably fall asleep, to be fair. Well, yeah, you know, I'll be doing some minor foot tapping. As you know, I'm not a big fan of public displays of rhythm. No, So you are, there'll yeah. be there'll be no dancing from me, but there will be some foot tapping. To be fair, I just like to sit there and just stare at them and just take it all in. Anyway, I'm looking forward to that very much. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it as well. It's going to be something totally different for me. But I'm, I'm excited to see you in your element because you've done a lot of travelling around the country, haven't you, seeing bands and stuff like that? Mm, yeah. It's it's almost as if it's your hobby. Well, it, it used to be, yeah. It used to be an expensive hobby. But I, I mean, I'll just be like, I'm sat there at home watching the telly. I'll just be sat yeah. there quietly staring at these people who I regard as heroes doing whatever they do, you know, so. Do you think you might waggle your finger? Only if somebody's misbehaving in the row behind right. us or something to yeah. get the waggy finger out and right. say, listen, you know, I'm yeah. trying to enjoy it. Because a lot of concerts I've been to, there's been somebody in my proximity being a prick or a bell end or sometimes both. Right, that does surprise me. Because they've had a few sherbets and they've obviously saved up all the universal credit to afford a ticket <laughs> and and then they go and they have to be raucous and ruin it for everybody else. So it's quite a high drop from the top of the co op live thing. Yeah. I believe down yeah. to the bottom. So we'll just Where are we? We're near the top somewhere, aren't we? Because we've <laughs> in we've, the nosebleed section. Yeah, we've got the cheap tickets, lastminute dot com, haven't we? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have. But somebody might yeah. be taking a dive, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Oh God, we'll have it to can't see. be any worse than when I went to see Busted. Right. I can't remember where it was now, but we were in the nosebleed section. It was so high. You went to I Leeds, was terrified. Didn't you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it Leeds. But the 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 stairs were that steep, mm-hmm. and we were right at the top. Uh, one girl, she just went arse over tits. She went down the stairs. Honest yeah, to God, shit scary. my pants. If you're tall, yeah. especially, like I am, yeah. and your centre of gravity is higher, I don't mm. like walking downstairs because I always feel like I'm going to topple over. Well, you did down that my stairs once, didn't you? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not hard, is it? <laughs> it's because they wind round. Warwick Davis size. couldn't fit up your fucking <laughs> staircase, could he? <laughs> it's because he's got big feet. And the stairs sort of wind round, so you know the narrow on one part, and then. But I, I had a, I have a Mrs. Hinch basket on the stairs, so if anything needs to go upstairs, it goes in there. Uh, I've had to move it now, obviously, because he went arse up and tipped down the stairs. I've I've never seen such a small. In fact, the last time I saw a staircase that small, it was in a fucking doll's house. <laughs> a Wendy house. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it, it is ridiculous. Uh, I can't even fit through it, and now you've put that fucking wreath around your door like somebody's oh dead my God. i can't even get through the front fucking door just go sideways i don't understand i can't, I can't fit is. sideways either because i'm as fucking wide sideways as i am front ways <laughs> right well i'm not getting rid of it, it looks pretty mm. anyway right i watched a tiktok before right Shocker. and it mentioned it mentioned about um there's nothing more random than um, a woman's notes, you know, in her phone. Oh, yeah. So get your notes out. Right. Might be embarrassing, this. Yeah, I know. And now what I didn't realise is it's brought notes, because this is a new phone. I thought, oh, well, I won't have any. Turns out, yeah, I do, because they've been brought over from, like, 2000 and... My earliest is 2022. Yeah. Have you got any good ones in there? I've The first one that I've got just says, tub of strawberries, compost... Table runner and Tupperware. Well, what's that to do with? I don't know. I've got no idea. August 2022, that one. My next one just has uh, Dave Black, Mumford and Sons, Lover of Light, Cisco, Unleash the Dragon, Meatloaf, Objects in the Rearview Mirror, and Billy Ocean, Suddenly. I don't know why that's in there. It sounds like a list of your favourite songs or something. It could well be. 
Oh, here's one. Weird things that I get embarrassed by. This must have been for a TikTok that I was doing. Right. So if any of this resonates with you. So the first thing that embarrasses me is people singing happy birthday to me. Yeah. Or just to anyone. It. It's awful. I hate it. I don't know why they do it. I remember I used to, when I was little, I think I used to cry. You know, at school, mm. when everyone would sing happy birthday, they used to get the, the paper cake out for you. The paper cake? Yeah, we never had a proper cake. Do you not remember? Did you never get like, a, it was a square, I remember it being a square cake. It looked like a cake, mm. but it, but I remember this lad, Reggie, uh, Reginald he was called, he tried to eat it and it was cardboard. Oh, Right, did yeah. he have snot bubbles coming out of his nose as well? I can't remember. I can't remember. But I just remember being really disappointed because every time they brought it out, we thought we were getting cake. But no, it was just cardboard cake. Um, yeah, so people singing happy birthday to be is number one. Number two is uh, the Aldi cashier's speed. You know, the, when they used to just throw it at you. Yeah. But you couldn't get it in the bag or in the trolley quick enough. Yeah. That. Uh, number three is going through a manual car wash. Well, yeah, I, yeah, you will get embarrassed there, won't you? Because you just kind of sat yeah. there while these slaves are washing. Just your out car. there cleaning, yeah, cleaning the bird shit off my car. Like you're stuff. some kind of Victorian plantation yeah. owner or something. Do you know the it was the first time that I did that was only last year because I was too embarrassed to actually go and do it. Mm. The next one is um, spitting whilst I'm speaking. Yeah, it does happen, doesn't it? And it's. Yeah. What do, what do you say? Because you can't say, oh, I've just spat all over you. I'm sorry. Well, this is it. Yet yeah, do you address it? Yeah. Because you know oh, they've because... seen it and you're looking well, at it as well. They've felt it. Yeah. yeah. Imagine yeah. if it's on them. Because mm. I know there have been times when people have spat on me whilst, they're, whilst they've been talking. Yeah. And it sort of hit me between the eyes and stuff. And I'm like, I can't leave this. This needs wiping off. Yeah. But I don't yeah. want to embarrass them by yeah. being like, you just fucking spat on me. I know. Well, maybe we should so, just, you know, address it in future and just normalise it. What, just it. like, you've just fucking spat on me? Yeah. No, I can't. No, I'd just sit there with it dribbling down. If it was me, that. you'd tell me. Well, yeah, because you'd just fucking spat on me, probably. But I don't know. I'm comfortable enough to do it to you. Mm. Um, the next one is seeing my neighbours. Yeah, I'm like that. Do you know, somebody was coming into my building yesterday. Yeah. I forget. I think I've been to the co-op again yesterday. And somebody was having trouble typing the code into the, the entry system on the door. Yeah. And I walked round to the car park to my car, unlocked <laughs> it, locked it again, looked round to see if they'd gone in, which they had done, and then I went in. Why do why are we like this? I don't know. I just don't want to I just don't want to deal with people. No. So just be warned if you see either of us in weather screen. We will just go in the or other in direction. Home and bargain. <laughs> you're probably gonna get spat at. <laughs> I've done it many times when I've been like say I've wanted to go outside in the garden or something. If my if my neighbour's out there, I ain't going. Yeah, it's awkward. It is awkward. I'll just, isn't I've, it? I've literally ran when I've when I've heard his motorbike, I've literally ran back in. Yeah. It's it's very odd. I don't know why because he's lovely. So oh, oh, he's charming. A charming, violent alcoholic. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but he's never been violent to me. Oh well, it's all right then. I mean, Fred um... West never <laughs> buried me under his patio, but you know, well, nice no, bloke. But, yeah, but you know, the good thing about him, one, he, well, he offers me a lot of content. Let's mm. face it, for yeah. Laurenation Street. So right, okay. So the next, the and the final one. I don't know why I went up to six. That's annoyed me. But is asking people, you know, for the pound for the trolley. Oh yeah. If I yeah, if, if if I've got a pound and I ask them or if they ask me and I've got a token. Yeah, yeah. And then they have to explain, token, Oh, I've yeah. got a token, I've not got a pound. Yeah. You know. Uh, apparently that's that's the weird things that I get embarrassed mm. by. I think the thing I get embarrassed most by I don't well it's a couple of things. I don't like phoning people. Yeah. And I don't like going into small shops. <gasps> I hate that. I hate going in because it's even, not even a shop, when you go to a car boot and you go up to their table. Yeah. And, oh, no. For They're car, watching you. I just walk around the middle. You feel obligated then to Well, this is, to this buy is the problem. Don't you? Exactly. There was there was a shop at the on the corner by my street, right? And it was, it was literally right up my street because it was one of those where you take your containers and then they fill it up for you with pasta, rice... You know what, like shampoos, conditioners. Um, I'm sure you've heard of those shops before. Mm. I was dying to go into that. All all throughout COVID, it was open. You know when there was no pasta? Yeah. And you had to buy it on the black market and stuff like that. Yeah. They, they had some. Oh. Yet, 
I still was just too anxious to go in because I thought, oh, fuck, what if I go in and they'll try and make conversation with me? Mm. And then just as I plucked up the courage to go, it had closed down. Too but late. yeah, I know what you mean about it. Although I was, I was, I was just too late. But I know what you mean about small shops yeah. when it's just that one shopkeeper Sorry. inside. Yeah, can't stand it. Uh, well, I, I, let's have a look at some of my notes in my phone here. Uh, well, the first one says Council Estate Onions <laughs> because it's. Um, I was thinking about ideas for the podcast, the last time's podcast, which will be released the day after we've we've recorded this one. So I was thinking that that maybe that be the title. So because we did talk <laughs> about council estate onions, didn't we? We we had a massive fight about onions. Yeah. So that I think that's going to be the title of of last time's <laughs> podcast. So I just wanted to write that down so I didn't forget it because I thought that was a good a good title for a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Um, I've got a list of things because I can't remember stuff about you, so I have to write it down. So I've got on, I've got a list of three of your favourite perfumes. So I don't Ariana Grande Cloud. Oh yeah, I like that. One. Jimmy Choo Blossom Red. Yeah, I like and that. One. Mark Jacobs Daisy Black. Daisy Black. Yeah, just the normal one, I think. Oh right. You said you like that. I was going to say. So, yeah. and some ideas for like Christmas presents and stuff. Oh, and what's also, on there? I'm not telling you. And also oh. your shoe size. Oh. Yeah. Because I forget, and then it seems like then if I get something which you've so anything you might mention throughout the year, or anything that I think I need to know, I put it in there, and then it seems like I've been really thoughtful. You're so clever. I've got nothing like that in mind. No, I know, which is why it's taken you twelve months to buy me a decent present. <laughs> Piss off! You did all right at Christmas. Uh, my next one it says, oh, it's about my car, so uh, it's the colour of my car quartz grey okay and the style of me wheels which is gemini and then i've written down the cam belt and water pump service interval what type of oil it takes what size the tires are in case i need to buy tires what size wipers i need and the timing belt uh is due in august 2025 or 110,000 miles because you have to you have to know this stuff about you i know you don't you're relying on me to sort your car out in future and realize that but yeah. Somebody has to. And then, disgracefully, the next one is a list of PIN numbers. Mr. PIN. <laughs> because I, I can't remember them. So I've got two debit cards and yeah. three or four credit cards, and they've all got different PIN numbers, so I have to write them down, which defeats the object, doesn't it? Yours is a very grown-up one. My, what else is yeah. on here? I've got a list of Christmas presents. I put my Christmas presents in here for, you know, for when I'm buying them. Mm-hmm just so that I know that I've got that person. I've got a very long number that I think might be a reference number for something. I've got a disgustingly dark and dry sense of humour that will leave you either cry laughing or just crying. Have you said that to me or summer? Or No. Right, I, well, I don't know where that's from. I've got... I'm a, I'm a big fan of a list. I love a list. Mm-hmm. Um, on this list was aftershave, hand cream, soap set, dressing gown, book, dictionary... Oh, it's your Christmas My card Christmas list. Christmas list. Ah, I yes. thought it was a shopping list. So you can delete that one. I've also got one that says turkey crown, pate, bread for pate, chutney, roast potatoes, veg Yorkshires, Chris, yeah, sausage and bacon balms. Right, there we go. Oh, this one will get you. You won't have a fucking clue. These were predictions that I was making for 2024. So, guys, these are my predictions. These are TikTok predictions, okay? So the first one is Bevo will choke. The set, Do you know who Bevo is? No, I don't want to. Move on. Okay. I don't want to. Uh, Elfa Bar comes into a lot of money and then quickly loses it. Elf Bar? That's a vape. No, this is an actual person on, on TikTok as well. She's come into a lot of money, quickly lose it, cut off Maria, she'll end up living in a tent next to Paul Breach. CLA will be back again, being sectioned. I've said that Eden, Eden Harvey will divorce and Yaz will move in with Eden and steal her dog. So but now she's got several dogs. So that's the sort of shit that I've got in my phone. Well, interestingly, mm. I've got the lyrics to a song I've written for the Lancashire Hot Pots, which I've yet to send them. Oh, I've just got the ick. Yeah. No, because, have you heard of the Lancashire Hot Pots? No. Okay. Well, I'll play something of theirs to you. In fact, I think I have done. Did I play you the song? a song called The Girl from Bargain Booze? Yes. You did. Right. Oh, yeah, you did, actually. That's yeah. the Lancashire... They, they do like right. Lancashire rip-offs of famous songs, so that was, okay. I think, supposed to sound a bit like Angels. 
Well, I came up with a song based on Chiquitita by ABBA. Right, and you've called it Chicken Tika? No, I've called it Chippy Tea, son. Right. So I had this idea. So anyway, we'll gloss over that, mm. shall we? Because you seem to have gone all weird on me. Um, what? Because I'm not like that's amazing. Well, you should be proud that I'm very creative, you fucking ingrate. <laughs> Shouldn't you? Well, do they get people messaging them all the time? With I, d- I, d- I doubt it. I don't think there are many people mm. cleverer than I am. Oh, you are um, behind you, aren't you? I forgot. The next one is, says Hegarty's Hard One. <laughs> and that starts. <laughs> what is it? It's it's a, a game, a quiz I used to play on the radio. <laughs> It's it's a list of like uh, radio ideas and stuff. So, yeah, I used to do like a really hard question of the day, and that was what it was called. Oh my god, that's amazing! I'm crying. That's amazing. Oh, and, that shocked me. Sorry. Uh, and and for, for some reason as well, I also have a potential idea for the name of my autobiography. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, this is from like seven years ago. Oh, give me some. Give me... Do, you want, do you want to know? Well, to yeah, be fair, there's only one idea. It's sex, no drugs, and sausage rolls. <laughs> so if if I ever release an autobiography, it's going to be called Sex, No Drugs, oh and Sausage God. Rolls. Oh God, that's so good. Oh, that section was even better than I thought it was going to be. Oh my God, Hegarty's hard ones, right? So yeah, so that was. Uh, I love that. That was good. Now um, we've got a dilemma to do left over from uh, because somebody, a couple of people, the other week emailed uh, doublechinwag at hotmail dot com, which is where you can send your correspondence to us. Yeah, uh, and we didn't one get one of the places. One of the places, yes, and we didn't get time to do it in last time's podcast so we're going to do it now are you ready for this you have to be i'm ready have to be serious now okay for this okay it says uh hi lauren uh-huh none taken thanks very much <laughs> hi lauren my boyfriend works with a girl who i think fancies him and it's worrying me i've seen and heard the way she is around him when we've been out for drinks with his workmates and when they've been on video calls together when he's working from home I've talked to him about it, and he says that she hasn't said anything flirty or inappropriate to him, and I trust him and believe him. The problem is that I think that if she does say something to him, I think he should cut her off as much as possible so as not to encourage her, but he says he wouldn't want to do that because they're friends. I'm sure that if a male friend of mine started coming on to me, he'd want and expect me to do the same, so why won't he? I don't think it's unreasonable, and I worry that the reason he won't do it is because he secretly fancies her. Am I the arsehole? What do I do? It's a tricky one. I genuinely believe that no woman can steal your man. He will just go willingly if he wants to. I would be more concerned if he was trying to hide all of these interactions that he was having, if I'm if I'm totally honest. He said that there's nothing happening. And if you believe him, then just leave it. Let it let it go. At the end of the day, it's his friend. If he wants to go off and cheat with her, he's going to do it regardless of whether you try and um, control him or not. And you just trying to hold on to him and control the situation and control what he does, he's only going to push him further towards her, if I'm honest. it's a li- I don't want to say psycho behaviour because I have been in that position before. But he, if he wants to cheat, he will do it regardless of whether you're trying to grip on or not. So I just leave him. Don't mean leave him as in the relationship. I mean, you said you trust him. So show that you trust him and do your best to try and put it into the back of your mind and just be aware of the fact that this is a you problem. This isn't a him problem just yet. Um, as long as you're setting out clear boundaries, stuff that you will accept, stuff that you don't. If he's doing these video conversations in front of you, I don't see what the problem is. You know, if he's doing them behind your back, then I'd be more concerned about it, more worried. 
set out these clear boundaries that you would stuff that you would be comfortable with within reason let's you know let's be reasonable about it and if he chooses to go over those boundaries that make you feel uncomfortable then you've got something to say about it but if you're not laying those boundaries down how is he supposed to know where the goalpost is so that would be that would be my advice what about you andrew well i I think you've been uh, i think you've been a bit harsh on on her there to be honest yeah saying it's a bit like controlling behavior i don't see i'm not reading into it in the same way that you are but i think what she's saying is that she does trust him which she says that's fine but if this girl tries anything further Mm. she's laying down the rules as you as you put it and saying that he should then cut her off because that's what he would expect her to do if one of her male friends was being inappropriate. I did, yeah. And I I don't think that's unreasonable, personally. Actually, I forgot about that bit. I forgot. I, I must have switched off and started thinking of my own reply. Mm. If this girl, yeah, if this girl comes on to him... Then obviously that's one. What's that's one of the boundaries, isn't it? That you're that you're laying down previously. I don't. It's it's very hard to say because can you punish somebody for something that hasn't even happened? No. You know, if you no. if he goes if she goes in all guns blazing, if she does this, if she does that, that's it. That's that. These are going to be the the repercussions of it. He's he hasn't done anything wrong, and this is the problem with having all these hypothetical situations: is that people's feelings get hurt in a reality that's not existing at the moment. I think you've just got to be if if he's your boyfriend and and you know you trust him, you need to have a conversation with him and just say, listen, this is actually it's really affecting me now. This is the stuff that makes me feel uncomfortable. So I'd I'd, I'd rather that you you didn't do that and just sort of open the conversation from there. But like I say, if he's going to go, he's going to go regardless. Just be thankful for the fact that it's sort of out in the open and everything, and you're you're witnessing all of it rather than it being behind closed doors. I don't know. I mean, I think you're describing a different problem there, personally. Do you reckon? Yeah. What she, for, as far as I can tell, what she's saying is that from what she's seen in a work capacity, this girl's being a bit kind of overtly kind of friendly to him, which is coming across. I mean, you can usually tell if somebody fancies somebody else, can't you? One way or another, I think. And what she's saying is she's asked him that if this girl does anything further gives him the come on whatever that he doesn't take her on and cuts her off as much as he can she's worried that because he said well i'm not going to do that because she's my friend then you're in a situation where you're in a relationship with somebody who's got somebody else saying to your other half you know i fancy you i want to have babies with you you know blah 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 and he's already said he's not willing to cut her off in those circumstances and that's what she's worrying about, which, you know, I don't think is unreasonable. If I fired a female friend and she was giving me the come on, you wouldn't just say, oh, well, I trust you. You'd say, well, what's she fucking doing, this bitch, giving you the come on all the time? <laughs> wouldn't you? Quite rightly. Just the same if it was the other way around, I'd say, well, yeah, I do trust you, but we can't be in a relationship where yeah. this fella is saying to you every five minutes, you know, I fancy her. You can't yeah. have that in a relationship, can you? No, I suppose I get your point there. Yeah, I was totally missing out the facts that he turned around and said no. Mm. Uh, do you know what? Just fucking leave him. <laughs> <laughs> After well, all that, yeah, just yeah, leave him. Just leave him. Do you know what? It's not worth the stress, is it? It really isn't. No, I, I mean, I I, just, I agree with you that if she trusts him, if somebody's going to do it, they're going to do it anyway, aren't they? Yes, they but are. Yeah. She's she's concerned, and this is, and I I can see a point to an extent because there is a lot of double standards in relationships where one half does something that they wouldn't like being done to them, and they try to defend it, and I'm sure this bloke wouldn't like it if if a bloke was was coming on to his yeah. girlfriend and she was allowing it to happen and still have, maintaining contact with this person and therefore encouraging it. Yeah, I suppose the issue is it's not an issue the fact of of you know what is happening or what potentially is happening. I suppose the the main issue is then that she's saying this, this action is affecting me. Please don't do it and he said no, I'm going to carry on. It's not it's not even got that far. What she, I think what she's trying to do is reasonably talk to him about it and say, "Well, if it goes any further from her point of view, please will you cut her off because you know, you'd expect me to do that if it was the other way around, surely. It, 
He sure, said he's no. He's not going to tell her then. He just won't say anything then. Well, it depends if if, if he goes through with, with saying, I'm not going to cut her off, she's my friend, blah de blah de blah then he probably won't tell her. But I think at the bottom of this, the amateur psychologist in me says that <laughs> he wouldn't want to do it because he does secretly fancy her. Somebody will do something if they want to do it, and they won't do something yeah. if they don't want to do it. Yeah, that's that's my that's my thoughts with it. It's like I tr- I trust you because I know that you wouldn't want to do it. Yeah, because you can't be asked with you can't even be asked with me most of the time, Correct. let alone anyone else. Correct. And like you say, if someone is going to do it, they will go through hell or high water to, to do to do it. Whether you put down restrictions, boundaries obstacles whatever you want to do they will do it regardless mm. I, I just think that maybe we should possibly measure emotions and responses in accordance to what's actually happened so far rather than going to worst case scenario of this has happened this has happened and acting as if that has happened mm. and treating him as if that has happened well i i you know we're, this is the first time we've disagreed on a response what i would say to you anonymous is that if if he's already told you He's not going to cut her off if she starts being inappropriate. There's your answer. Well, yeah, to be... F- no, I do agree with that. I do agree with that because of what he's... It, but it's not the fact that it's another woman. It's just the fact that there's something that's making her extremely uncomfortable and he isn't willing to even negotiate it, listen to it or whatever mm. it is. If this is a hard boundary for her and he's like, no, you know, then then effectively he's picking the friend. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd say it was a hard boundary for anybody. You can't be in a relationship while your girlfriend or boyfriend is being messaged inappropriately all the time from somebody who they're not willing to to cut off because of that can you 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 can't have that can you You can't be in a relationship with somebody when they're allowing somebody else to to say these things to them all the time yeah i think and also it's like why would he even entertain it from this other woman well exactly the fact that he's told her that he wouldn't cut her off in those circumstances if she did take things further yeah um, tells you anonymous all you need to know he's 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 just told you to your face that he wouldn't do it. What's the reason he won't do it? He's saying it's yeah. because they're friends. I think there's more to it than that. Because even if they were friends, all right, it would be difficult, but you'd have to do it if your relationship was more important to you than this other woman was. And plus, if if she's trying to go over that line, then they're not friends. Because you don't do that with friends. It's more than friends, and then isn't it? Do you believe that men and women can be, can be friends? Because we have this situation a lot, don't we, where a friend of the other sex then yeah um um, some people just don't believe that they can be truthfully i think Mm. a lot of the time no and i think that's because you initially you become friends with that person because you're attracted to them surely i don't know because i don't know actually because well i'm sort of relating it to say work friends but i suppose that's a situation you're put in it's not free choice yeah but they're not your friends you put the people you work with most of the time aren't your friends and i know that's a difficult that's a blurred boundary that a lot of people have trouble with but trust me the people you work with aren't your friends yeah i'm talking about you know um people that you work with who then become friends for example or you know if a man look men are men if they see a woman that they that, that they like then the first thing they will do is attempt to become friends with them right there isn't a man on earth who I've known in my experience that's ever seen an ugly woman or a woman that they think is ugly, and that's mm. subjective, of course, and then try to become friends with them. Really? Yeah. Now, some it's, people, mm. you, I mean, you're friends with, like, um, the the lady that ran a radio station I worked at. I'm friends with her in the way that yeah. I'm friends with people, which is like, you know, maybe once every two months we'll exchange a couple of text messages or something. Yeah. Um, and I got to know her because she was my boss. Through no other way. Related, then, yeah, isn't yeah. But generally, you know, if you meet somebody in a pub or whatever, blah de blah de blah. If you think this yeah. woman is ugly, men are very fickle, and then they're not going to take any interest in a woman that they don't think is attractive. I don't think. Yeah, do you know what? I always, I always thought that men, you know, it's very easily men and women can be friends and stuff. But now, when I think about it, I don't have any male friends that are on par with like my female friends mm. that you that you just ring up and natter with it's always been 
some sort of situation, whether it be um, like work related to something that the reason that you are in contact with them, you know, it's never been like an organic thing, say, yeah. um, with my female friends and stuff. So, yeah, maybe I, wow, this is like a revelation for me because I genuinely always thought, yeah, of course they can be. Because I've had, I've had, when I think about it, it's like, yeah, I've had male friends before, but no, they've been colleagues. And have I seen them outside of work, just, just me and him? No. No, it's always been, you know, like within work or if we've gone out, it's been a group of us. So, oh. There you go. And there's always a cloud of suspicion, even if things are perfectly innocent. There's automatically a cloud of suspicion around men and women being friends. Yeah. Anyway, whether you like it or not, that's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, unless it's, as you say, it's like a work thing or whatever. So, yeah, the answer is, you know, no, I don't think generally. And, yeah. and I don't, I don't have a clue. I'm shit at giving advice because I only listen to half the questions. Yeah, so she's I'd completely to missed him. the point. So you're I absolutely did. right, anonymous. You're not the arsehole. He's told you his intentions. I'd worried about the reasons for his intentions, uh, and I would, you know, probably kick him into touch. So and I'd listen to Andrew. Difficult if you've got three kids and a mortgage, you know. But he's a bit of a prick. Don't hold back, will you? Sorry about that. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so thank you very much for listening uh, Double Chinwag with Lauren and Andrew is a wireless production and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed we'll speak to you again in a very short period of time, say bye bye Lauren bye Lauren <laughs> Corpse <laughs>